All right, we got part two of the key, starting with 19, okay? 19 deals with expanding. 8, x minus 7, x plus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and first do this, okay? Multiply that out. However you want to do it, you've got to be able to multiply those two out, right? x minus 7, maybe you organize it with an area model, x plus 2. So... Looks kind of messy here. You know, as you look at this, I hope you see that there's four multiplications that occur. You got your x squared, you got your 7x, and that was a minus 7x. You got your 2x, and you got your minus 14. And you're always going to combine these two middle terms. So that's uh, 8 times x squared minus 5x minus 14. And you just multiply the 8 through, and you got your 8x squared minus 40. You're distributing it. Minus 40x minus 80 and 32 is 112. Okay. Make sure I got that multiplication right. Yep. Okay, then 20. y equals 2x. 3x minus 4. Just distribute it. That would be 6x squared minus 8x. 21. You got uh, y equals 3x plus 4, negative 2x minus 4. That's a parabola that opens down. You just want to really, you're going to expand it. You're going to put it in standard form. Here's one way to organize it. I mean, 3x has to hit both of those. So 3x hits negative 2x, you got a negative 6x multiplies. Negative 6x squared. 3x times a minus 4 is a minus 12x. And don't forget this one, 4. Four and negative 2x. Make uh, negative 8x. And 4 and negative 4 make minus 16. So once again, here's the middle terms you combine. So you got negative 6x squared minus 20x minus 16. So we're going to keep going. We're making progress. All right, so the next problem that we go to is number 22. 22 is just another expand problem. Why? You got a quadratic here. It's kind of cool one. You got uh, you're sitting in vertex form. This is a parabola whose vertex is at well, x minus 3 moves you right 3, so 3, 4, the vertical stretch of 2. Uh, nonetheless, we are going to multiply this out. So, uh, 2 x minus 3, x minus 3, minus 4. I'm going to multiply this 2 in. That gives me a 2x minus 6. I'm going to multiply that by x minus 3. So now I got yellow times blue. Four multiplications, 1 and 2. That gives me 2x squared minus 6x, 3 and 4. Minus 6x plus 18 minus 4. 2x squared minus 12x plus 14. Next problem, 23. y equals, okay, you're looking at a quadratic in factored form, whose zeros are 5 and 4 thirds. So, let's say I do these two. Multiply them together first. Four multiplications. One, two, three, four. So, number one gets me 3x squared. Number two is a minus 4x. Number three is a minus 15x. Number four is a plus 20. Combine the middles. You got 
3x squared minus 19x plus 20. Okay, you got to multiply by 2. Okay, so this 2 is really sitting here, and the 2 is sitting here. So distribute the 2 through 6x squared minus 38x plus 40. 23, standard form parabola. Okay, 24. All right, next section. Twenty-four. Well, twenty-four on the back really turns into number one. Graph and write an equation in all three forms. Label your answers. These ones are going to take a little while, but we can do it. Negative two x squared plus twenty-two x minus forty-eight. This is in standard form. It's kind of cool. The y-intercept is negative forty-eight. That'll be nice to know. Um, from standard form, I can also grab the vertex easily. Now, vertex, the x of its negative b over 2a. And to get the y, you're going to plug it into the function and see what you get. So the opposite of b is negative 22. 2a, 2 times negative 2. So negative 22, negative 4. So 11 halves, which is 5.5. So, we need to know what the y value is when you plug 11 halves into that. When you plug, I'm going to grab a calculator. Um, I don't think it's worth the time right here. 11 halves squared plus 22 times 11 halves minus 48. So negative 2 times 11 halves squared plus 22 times 11 halves minus 48. And I got 12.5, or 25 halves. So when you plug 11 halves in for that x and that x, y becomes 25 halves, or 12.5. So kind of messy here. Vertex. Uh, 5.5 comma 12.5. We've talked a little in class. Once you get the vertex, going to vertex form is pretty nice. right? It's just a transformation. You've got this negative 2 sitting here. So in vertex form, you'll have negative 2. Now, normally the vertex of x squared is at 0, 0. So to get to 5.5, 12.5, you got to go to the right and up. Well, if you're going to go to the right, okay, the x in x squared, if you're going to go right, if you want to go right 5.5, x gets replaced with x minus 5.5. So this is x minus 5.5 squared. And then if you're going to go up, 12 and a half, you're just going to add 12.5 to that. So vertex form, negative 2 times x minus 5.5 squared plus 12.5. So we've got uh, our y-intercept, it's cool. We got uh, vertex form, which is nice because now we know the vertex. And the vertex is at 5.5. 12.5. Now, the other thing, if I was going to graph it, what I'd want to know is what are the um, what are the zeros? Well, factored form, if it's factorable, factored form would be really cool for finding the zeros. So let me just make some room. So let's take the original. Let's see. Let's see if it factors. Right away, I think I see everything, and we sh we need to take a negative a negative two out. Negative 2x squared minus 11x plus 24. So are there factors of 24? Right, that's a 1 out front in front of the x squared. Are there factors of 24 that add to negative 11? 
negative 7 and 4. Negative 2 times x minus 7 times x minus 4. Well, what does that mean? Well, okay, you have it in factored form, right? Here is standard form. Here is factored form. Here is vertex form. They all have their advantages. So standard form, y-intercepts right there. Factored form, if it's factorable, you'll have the zeros, the roots, the x-intercepts. So this is x equals 7 and x equals 4 are both are both roots of you know my quadratic well you're gonna make a graph you like you have all the good stuff here to make the graph okay seven and four Let's say that's four okay that's seven Okay, you know the graph passes through those two points. The vertex. The vertex is at 5 and a half, 12 and a half. Right here. 5.5, 12.5. Obviously, it opens down. The y-intercept is at negative 48. Let's put that down here. Negative 48, not really drawn to scale. Okay, well, you got this line that cuts your parabola in half. So your parabola is symmetric. So like these two points, right, those two distances right there are the same. So you got this distance here. That's 5.5, so another 5.5 out here. So that's a total of 11. So you got another point right there. Coordinates of that point are 11, negative 48. So... I'm going to make a graph, no problem. So my graph goes, I want this to look more curved. Something like that. Obviously at the top I'm just trying to get it more curved, but yeah, there's your graph. And you have all three forms. Okay. So we'll do a couple more of those. So that was number one on the back. Three forms, there's your graph. So it says label your answers. So this should be standard. This should be factored. This one would be vertex. Then you got the graph. Okay. Let's do another one. Let's do one of these in factored form. Okay. We won't do all these problems. We'll kind of do one of each. Y equals 5 times x minus 8 times x minus 6. Hey, there's a quadratic in factored form. Which is cool. I mean, if that's in factored form, I know it's zeros. I know it's roots. That thing comes across the x-axis at 6 and 8. Oh, and halfway between that, the vertex is on that line. And that's got an x value of 7. So if you plug 7 into your equation, 5, 7 minus 8, 7 minus 6, you'll get the y value of your vertex. So that's 5 times negative 1 times 1, which is negative 5. So our vertex is right here. And that's the point 5, sorry, 7 negative 5. Oh, you're almost done. I mean, with the graph portion. Now you need the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept, we'll see it when we take it to standard form. But we've got some points on the graph. So next step, let's take that to standard form. Well, all you got to do is expand it. x minus 8 times x minus 6. Four multiplications. Okay. 1. Whoop. 1, 2, 3, 4. So after you do that, you should get, um, let's see, we're going to have a 5. You'll combine the middle term, the, you know, the like terms. you got an x squared minus 8x minus 6x, so minus 14x plus 48. Multiply the 5 in, you'll get 5x squared minus 70x plus 
let's see, 5 times 50 would be 250, so 240. Oh, so the y-intercept is all the way up at 240, so you have to exaggerate a little, okay? So you're just going to put 240. So you got another point on the graph. And its symmetrical one is over here. Its coordinate is, let's see, what, double that distance to the vertex. So 14, 240. 1, 4, 240. So you got your graph now. Boom, there's your graph. So that's done. We got we got started in factor form, we got the graph, we got standard form. Now we just need vertex form. Easy, right? You got the vertex. Vertex form will be easy. Okay? So all you need to pay attention to is that blue thing, that blue thing. Vertex form. So we're going y equals five. That came from this five right here. Check. Or this five right here. Either one. Okay, five. Oops. Okay, 5 times, okay, vertex is right 7. That would be, if I want to go right 7, it's x minus 7. And down 5. Boom, right there. Vertex form. So you got factored, you got standard, and you got your vertex form. Next problem. So we did one from standard. Did I write the first one? Yep. We did one from standard. There's one from uh, factored form. And we should probably do one from vertex form. So I'm going to pick um, I'm gonna pick number 6 from vertex form, which is y equals negative 5 opens down x minus 7 squared plus 20. Did you know the vertex is at... Well, how does that compare to x squared? Let's see, it's right 7 and up 20. So 0, 0, move right 7, 7, 20. That'll be nice for the graph. Um, okay, so I'm going to multiply this out. I'm going to go to standard form. So negative 5, x minus 7, x minus 7, plus 20. Negative 5 times x squared minus 14x plus 49 plus 20. Distribute. Negative 5x squared plus 70x plus uh, 250 minus 5, 245. So minus 245. Minus two, four, five. Okay. Plus twenty. Negative five x squared plus seventy x minus two twenty five y intercept. Is that negative two two five? We already got the vertex, got the y intercept. We've got vertex form. You've got standard form. Now you need factored. Assuming this thing is factorable. I'm going to take out a negative 5. It'll give me x squared plus 35x minus oh, that'd be minus 35x. And that would be a plus here since I took minus 5. 225 divided by 5. 45. This is a nice one to factor because that number is a 1. So you kind of get to shortcut it a little. Factors of 45 that add to negative 35. Okay. So, I factor this one. Now I'm thinking. Factors of 45 that add to negative 35. Let's see, 15 and 3. Well, let's, let's think. 45 is 15 times 3, and 15 is 5 times 3 times 3. So you could go 15 and 3, you could go 9 and 5, 
Okay. Or you could go 45 and 1. All right. So you're thinking, how am I going to factor this if um, I can't find factors of 45 that add to negative 35? I'm checking my work here. I'm making sure that I even chose this one as possible. I'm thinking that this one doesn't factor in the manner in which we think it does. Oh, let's see. Number six. Two, three, four. I actually don't see it. I'm looking. Sorry. Huh. Yeah, so you're not going to be able to factor that one. You know, factor over the, over the number set that we've been factoring everything else over. So you're, you're good there, unless I made an error. I'm looking back through it. X minus 7, X minus 7. 49, negative 5 gets multiplied through. I'm thinking here, which is looks good. And then I add 20, negative 225, negative 5 out. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 5. Oh, that's my problem. I didn't factor this thing correctly. Negative 5 out of... Okay, so this is a problem. Uh, 70. There we go. 70 divided by 5 is... What? Uh, 14? So minus 14x. Okay. Are there factors of 45 that add to negative 14? Uh, let's see. 45. Are there factors of 45 that add to negative 14? Uh, yes. 9 and 5. Are there factors? Yep. Okay. Negative 9. Sorry. X minus 9, X minus 5. That'll do it. So now we're looking at it in factored form. My apologies. I was not able to see that right away. Factored, standard. You know, now that you've got factored, now you know the zeros, right? Zeros are the roots, are 9. So we'll label them here. Well, the zeros are at uh, 9 comma 0, 5 comma 0. So we can take this information and make a graph. So we'll free up some room. Okay, so real quick, you got the x-axis, you got the y-axis, you got 9, you got 5, you got the vertex. Okay, obviously lies on the line halfway between them. 720. So let's call this, uh, this will be 20, okay? 720. And the y intercepts at negative 225, so we'll call this negative 225. So symmetrical to that point in purple. We're going to go over here. So that would be the point 14, comma, negative 225. And we have our graph. You have your parabola. OK, I'll do the last two problems with you, too. We've got time. Yep, a few minutes.
Okay, what transformations are necessary? I kind of like these problems. I think the first one might be tougher. x squared minus 11x plus 24. And you're going to compare it. That's f of x. You're going to compare it to g of x, which is x minus 3 squared plus 2. Tough to compare the graphs, you know, the functions, when they're in different forms. Put f of x in vertex form, and then we can talk. So your goal needs to be take f of x to vertex form. Then I can compare them. Right? If they're both in vertex form, I can compare. Um, you know, I can compare these, the inside piece and the outer piece. You know, so I'll be able to see how they differ from left to right and up to down. So f of x in vertex form. Let's see. You got to do the. Uh, I need to find the vertex. So the vertex is the opposite of b over two times a. So that's five and a half. So it's in vertex form, it'll be, okay, that's a 1 here, it'll be 1. Let's see, if the, vertex, if the x of the vertex is to the right 5 and a half, it'll be x minus 5.5 squared. Now I need to find the y of the vertex. So if you plug 5 and a half into f, you will get, I'm going to a calculator. So 5.5 squared minus 11 times 5.5 plus 24, negative 6.25. Okay. So minus 6.25. Okay, so f of x and g of x are both in vertex form. So compare them. Well, let's see. Um, if you think about like x squared. It's got a vertex of 0, 0. Now both of these have the same basic shape as x squared because of this one out front right there and the one right there. So they got the same shape. They're just in different spots. Well, f is over to the right 5.5 and down 6.25. g is over to the right 3, right 3, and it's up to. So how do you get from f to g? You know, another way I could have done this, I could have said you're over 5.5 and you're down 6.25. You went right and down, it puts you here. And you need to get to over only 3, but up 2. So how do you get from 1 to the other, from f to g? Well, you're going to have to go up 8.25. And you're going to have to go left 2.5. So I would say to get from f to g, I would go up 8.25 and left 2.5. What transformations are needed to get from f to g? You know, a transformation, a vertical translation up 8.25 and a horizontal uh, left 2.5. Okay, last problem. One more. And we're done. Okay, you got two. Okay, f of x is 2x squared. I'm just going to change it all to x. 4x minus 6, g of x, is 2 times x plus 2 squared plus 3. Once again, uh, it's tough to compare them. I'm going to put f in vertex form. The vertex of f is 4 over 2 times 2, so that's 1. The x of the vertex is 1, so it'll be x minus 1 squared. Because of that 2, there'll be a 2 right here. Now I just need the y of the vertex. So if you plug 1 in for x, you get 2 times 1 minus 4 times 1 minus 6. So that's minus 10 plus 2 is minus 8. All right. So, hey, I'm sitting in vertex form. 
So that's your f of x. Now you just need to compare the two in green. So how do you go from f to g? Okay, really nice. They both have this too. So f, the vertex of f, is right 1 down 8. The vertex of g is left 2 up 3. So to get from f to g, you got to go up 8, up 3 more, so up 11. Up 11, and you're going to go left 1, 2, 3. So you would slide up 11 and left 3. And to get from f to g, you would slide up 11 and left 3. Three. So, yeah, we're good. We're done. Thank you.